Welcome to the first inaugural episode of Game Alog, a show where I kill people and tell you how they taste, where I talk about video games in the style of a monologue. <laughs> you get it. Video games have always been a huge passion of mine. Eventually, I'd like to do game reviews on this channel, but in the meantime, while I'm still gearing up for that, I'd like to forcibly inject my opinion heroin into your curiosity bloodstream and get you so high, you'll end up blowing a dude under a bridge. Today, we're going to be talking about Shao Kahn, the big badass hammer wielding head button spear chucker. Wait, that's not. I was never a fighting game type of guy, but that all changed when the fire needs. When I first played Mortal Kombat 9, I think the gaming community collectively shat their pants so hard they created an extra layer of pant with their own feces when this game came out because Mortal Kombat had never looked nor felt this good. Personally though, I don't know what it was about it that attracted me to it. I mean, I didn't give a shit about fighting games and fancier visuals to me just meant, oh boy, I won't be able to run this on my electronic typewriter of a computer. Maybe it was the tight controls, maybe it was all the cool testicle receding fatalities, I don't know what else though, I mean Mortal Kombat's always been a... F <laughs> okay, maybe giant bouncing bazongers might have had something to do with it, but fuck you, at least I can admit that virtual titanic turbo titties were an influencing factor on my video game purchases when I was 16 years old. This was a growing up moment in my life as a gamer. I no longer was satisfied with the old fashioned button mashing with the bros. I wanted to figure out how these games were played and get good at them so that I could kick all my friends asses at it and not get invited over anymore. So I trained my boy Genshi, I mean Kenshi over here, until I could beat the ladder mode on expert without using continues and fell in love with the game all over again. I'm still not a fighting game player, but fighting games were definitely opened up for me by Monkey Kong Go 9 and I became obsessed with learning combos for all the characters so I could kick ass even if I was Shang Tsung and did nothing but transform. And what I learned from that experience, besides the fact that this loud old cunt can fucking swallow all of hell's lava straight from Satan's demon cock, is that the main antagonist of the game, Sharia Khan, has an ingenious design that I don't think people notice. Now, maybe this is just my pattern-seeking brain obsessively connecting extraneous information because I'm afraid of death by bears and there's a chance that maybe an observation about Mortal Kombat will help me not die by a bear, but I find a certain meaning behind Shao Kahn design that is the core point of this video that we eventually are gonna fucking get to. I remember I couldn't even beat Shaka Khan on easy, especially when I played the story mode. I was looking up YouTube videos on how to fucking do anything when he spams the goddamn hammer over and over and over and puts you in a stun lock and repeatedly getting bashed in the face with giant airborne sledgehammers, which is a perfect allegory for my life. Point is, you can't just button mash Shaka Khan because he's overpowered to hell. If you suck and don't know how to play the game. Yeah, I know that sounds like the most Dark Souls fanboy quiet bullshit to say, but hear me out, because I'm gonna blow your mind with my curious heroine or whatever. The thing is, if you actually know how to play the game and you know how to block or avoid all of Shemp, Shemp Curly's Curly. attacks, he's a complete joke to fight. The times when I most often get flawless victories during an expert ladder are the first couple of fights when the AI is scaled down and while fighting Goro or Shane Shane Corner. Shang Tsung has miles on Shoddy, Shoddy Car. I don't know why he works for the guy. He could completely destroy his life easily. I also have no idea how Sindel apparently lost her empire to this guy seeing how she's fucking cancer I'm sorry I shouldn't joke about cancer I I'm just trying to raise awareness of a type of cancer that's too common to be so unrecognized. Anyways, Shil Kike's design seems to contradict the entire point of his character, but in fact, he is the perfect antagonist for Mortal Kombat. If you are, or ever were, a button masher that sucked at fighting games, you almost definitely, at one point, while playing, had the thought of, Man, I, I wish, wish there, there was, was one character that was just clearly better, better than the others, that had the best moves, and, and was, was the strongest, the strongest and, and that, that didn't, didn't require so many button, button controls, controls to play. To play. Well, guess what there is, and you don't get to play. But if you want to beat single player mode, you have to beat him. As well as another less strong but still overpowered character that's basically just him with four arms and more telegraph. Or you can play with your friends and get your ass kicked or win by complete chance. Now maybe I'm tripping and that's just how all final bosses and fighting games are, but I already wrote the video, so do me a favor and fuck. Chump change is a big fuck you to people who don't learn how to play the game. Even on easy mode, he can still be a challenge to the unskilled. So what's so genius about this is the simple fact that this is exactly what the character of Sham Wow, wow. is meant to represent. A big, dumb, asshole, lumbering hulk that doesn't have any actual fighting skills skills whatsoever, just big muscles and brute strength. All the characters in Mortal Kombat are trained in some kind of martial arts and have to rely on their reaction time and reflexes to go up against huge odds. This kind of marriage between mechanics and story universe character lore is the kind of shit that almost makes video games a replacement for sexual relationships because it makes me jizz so fucking hard. Things like this are what make it feel like gaming is advancing. Like I said, graphics are cool and everything, but better graphics doesn't mean better games. As if you haven't heard that a fucking million times. Just because movie technology advances doesn't mean movies got better, but when Orson Welles made movies like Citizen Kane, the industry was changed forever. Shining a car won't make it not have 150,000 miles on it and a broken air conditioner. And maybe it wasn't intentional? Developers have been accidentally creating great games, not really knowing what they wanted to accomplish ever since fucking Pong. But regardless, it makes Moped Coed especially charming to me. It's always been the one fighting series I found particularly interesting, and this just makes me love it that much more. Yusha Khan is the perfect fighting game antagonist. He's the equivalent of if you had a friend come over 
over to play Dragon Ball Xenoverse couch multiplayer and you just picked Broly over and over and destroyed your life. Luckily, Mortal Kombat is balanced, so all you have to do is actually give a shit and his ass is grass. The ultimate achievement is not to beat him, but to be so good that you realize he's no longer your greatest challenge. And you grow to realize that the truly skilled opponents are much more powerful than Shimmy Kimmel, Kimmel over here. here. As silly as Mortal Kombat is as a series, it does have one meaningful message there, in that trying to be a fucking meatball doesn't make you the greatest fighter. And life isn't about being the strongest. It's about being the most adaptable. Thank you for watching Gamealog. And that was the genius behind Shao Kahn. I'd like to thank In Your Face Cake for making that wonderful opening animatic. And you should all subscribe to the channel Red Static because he's going to be uploading a video soon that we worked on together. Thank you. Watch out for his ex-wife, though. She'll really talk your goddamn ear off. Ah!